it's Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel today's video I'm going to be showing you how to crochet these really simple gingerbread coasters they look like little round gingerbread cookies they also make great ornaments for your Christmas tree or for decorating and they also make great place markers for your Christmas and holiday parties it measures about five inches across so it's a really nice size for a Christmas mug full of hot cocoa now you can find this free crochet pattern on my blog and I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video to make a gingerbread coaster you're just going to need a small amount of four different colors of yarn I'm going to be making my gingerbread in this little bit lighter color of beige to make it a little bit easier for you to see what I'm doing I'm going to be making the bow in blue and it's up to you where you place that bow you can put it on the top if you want it to look girly and you can put it at the bottom if you want it to look boyish it's up to you where you put that bow or even if you add one I'm going to be doing the little cheeks with this light pink and then lastly I'm going to be using just a solid white for the icing around the edge now this one was all done in I love this yarn with a little bit darker beige sparkle red and sparkle white and this one was done with Red Heart Super Saver and just some solid cranberry green and white now the last thing that you're going to need is just a small amount of black to make the eyes and the smile you can also do those in white if you want to so that it looks like icing we're going to be stitching today with our H hook it's a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook you'll need a needle for weaving in ends and attaching your pieces and of course embroidering on that face and then of course you'll need a pair of scissors we're going to begin with our beige yarn for the cookie portion of our gingerbread cookie ornament or coaster we're going to begin with a slip knot and we're going to chain four our first three chains will count as one double crochet and we're going to place nine double crochets in the fourth chain from the hook if you would like to use the magic circle at this point you certainly can if you feel more comfortable doing it that way I prefer to do it this way it's just a preference so I'll continue stitching in that same chain until I have a total of 10 double crochets and remember that chain 3 counted as our first double crochet all right let's see how many I've stitched here's our chain 3 so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine so I need one more double crochet we're going to join to the top of that chain three with a slip stitch and we'll go ahead and chain three now before we go any farther I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to go ahead and weave this end in and I'm also going to close up this circle sometimes when you do this particular way of starting you're going to have a little hole and so since this has to be weaved in anyway we're going to go around those stitches and go ahead and close that up nice and snug and cut that off and now row one has ten double crochets joined to the top of the chain three and chained three for row two we're going to place two double crochets in each of those ten our chain three counts as our first so we'll go ahead and stitch another double crochet right in the same stitch as our chain three and then we'll stitch two double crochets in each of those double crochets around and since we had 10 double crochets in row one for row two we'll have 20 because we're stitching two double crochets in each of the double crochets around 
I stitch two double crochets in each of the 10 double crochets around. So now I have 20. I join to the top of my chain three and chain three. And for row three, we're basically going to do the same thing we did for row two. We have 20 double crochets and we're going to stitch two double crochets in each of those 20. Again, our chain three counts as one double crochet. So we'll stitch a double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three, and then we'll stitch two double crochets in each of those 20. And this is going to give us a nice flat coaster so we can set a nice big mug on it. So I'll continue around stitching two double crochets in each of those 20 double crochets. I'll join here to my chain three and then we'll be finished with the center portion of the cookie. So I joined to my chain three. I have 40 double crochets around and I did not chain three because we're going to change to our white color in order for it to look like frosting. So I've got my white here. I'm going to join, snug everything down, and we'll weave those in later. And what we're going to do is we're going to form that bumpy edge that looks like frosting. So we're going to single crochet in the next three stitches. Let me pull that in a little bit. There we go. One, two, three. And now we're going to chain three and we're going to slip stitch in the top of this and I go through those two loops we're going to just do a slip stitch and then we'll repeat that one two three chain three and join to the top of that single crochet a lot of people go through just this one loop. I like to go through both of them. I think it makes a much sturdier stitch. One, two, three. And see how that makes those little bumps that kind of look like icing? All right, and then one, two, three. And slip stitch to the top and repeat and we'll repeat this all the way around our gingerbread cookie now if you're wanting to make this into a christmas ornament i would suggest that you make two of the center pieces where we did the beige put them together and then do this edge sewing the two together going through both thicknesses that way it's a good sturdy piece for hanging up and using for decorations. If you're going to use this just as a coaster like I am or maybe a place marker, then just doing one thickness is totally fine. It's up to you how you want to do it. It's just by doing two thicknesses it makes it much sturdier. I'm going to continue on around doing three single crochets and the peacock stitch until I reach back around over here. I've stitched my edge all the way around, three single crochets and a picot or pico. And when you get to the end, you'll have one of the pico stitches and then one stitch left. And then what we're going to do is we're going to skip this first single crochet. Then we'll go behind and pull that loop to the back. We'll cut our yarn, which I've already, I already cut mine, and tie off. That equals out because we had 40 stitches and that leaves one extra stitch there. And so by skipping that first one, it equals it out. And now we need to take a minute and weave in these ends with our needle, and then we'll be ready to add the face and the bow. My ends are all tucked in and neat and tidy, and now I want to make the bow for my gingerbread cookie. 
I'm going to be using this blue. Move my scissors out of the way there. And what we're going to do is start with our slip knot and chain eight. We're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook and then we'll single crochet in each of the chains across. That will give us seven single crochets. Of course, we started in the second chain from the hook and so we don't count that one. All right, we're gonna chain one and turn and then we're going to do one single crochet in each of the single crochets across. There we go. Don't forget that last one or you'll be one short. You need seven single crochets. Chain one and turn and then we'll repeat that. One single crochet in each of the stitches across. I've got a knot following me route there. There we go. So now we're going to tie off Cut our yarn and tie off. We'll need to weave these ends in real quick. Let's go in and out of those stitches. Do the other tail. There we go. We'll do the same thing. We'll just go in and out of those stitches, making sure we go through fibers. All right, so now we have this little rectangle. We're going to cut a piece of matching yarn, or you can do contrasting yarn, about 10 or 12 inches long. We're gonna scrunch up the middle with this yarn. So what I do, it, the first thing I do is I, I put it on and I bring it around and I start scrunching it in. And you have to eyeball it, make sure that you stay in the center, and I wrap it around four or five times. Then I bring it to the back and I tie it on to this that we just started. And then I'm gonna take my hook and I'm gonna go underneath and I'm gonna pull one of those tails under. And then I'll tie another knot. And that's just gonna help that center to stay put. One and two. Now leave yourself enough tail of the yarn so you can sew that on. And on this one, I'm going to put it on the top. It's up to you. You can. I always put it over where I joined as well. If it's the girly one, then that's the top. But if it's the boyish one, then that's the bottom. It's up to you where you want to put it. But I like to put it where I joined that white, just in case it doesn't look beautiful. Then I take those ends. And I come back up through and I stitch right in the center. Pull that snugly to the back. Then I grab that other one and I do the same thing. I don't sew down the um, sides of the bow. I want them to sort of be 3D and stick up. There we go. This one ended up being just a wee bit shorter than I would like it to be. Usually I cut too long of a thread. This time, too short, but it'll still work. We'll get it through there. All right, so that can be kind of sticking up, whether it's the little girl um, with the bow at the top or the little boy with the bow at the bottom. All right, so then what I do on the back side is I go ahead and just tie a little knot. It's okay because it's on the edge and it's not going to affect anything. 
just make sure you I always tie three knots I don't know why I just always do and clip so now our gingerbread either has a bow tie or it has a hair bow it's up to you all right I've threaded on a piece of yarn that's about 18 inches long and so what we're going to do is we're going to make the smile first and we follow this line right here of stitching for the smile I start about right here we want to make sure that you go in a stitch and not the hole between or you're going to lose your stitches they'll just slide right through and you won't be able to see them we're going to leave a little bit of a tail on the back so that we can weave that in and then we'll just go about every stitch and this um, you want it to be snug but you don't want it to be too tight and you don't want it to be droopy so you're gonna have to kind of eyeball it make sure it's how you want it to be now you can make a plain smile you can make a crooked smile if you want it's completely up to you if you want to make a silly or a sweet gingerbread now we're not going to go real high because we're going to add those little round cheeks and I just sort of look at it make sure everything's even and it looks even to me let's bring it down here better and so then what I do is I go right back over what I just did whoops there we go and I stitch over it again and this gets me back over to the other side and it also makes the smile just a little bit thicker there we go don't want to pull too tightly and the other reason is it gets me back over here where I can weave these ends in then we're going to do the eyes and we're going to need another piece of black and of course if you prefer to do them in another color you certainly can you could make the eyes blue or um, you know green make them look like your family or your kiddos with the different colored eyes it's up to you all right so I've got my thread on here again and we're just going to make a couple of eyes and of course it depends on how sweet you want to make your gingerbread how you do your eyes I like to come up in the stitch and go down in another stitch and then I'll try to make it the same on this other edge And we're just making two slits and we're making sure that we're stitching through a stitch not a hole because again you'll lose your eye down in that hole all right so there's my little girl eyes because I'm making mine into a little girl we'll turn this over and weave those ends over all right so there's our little girl she looks cute but we're gonna add those little round cheeks I've made one little cheek and gone ahead and sewn it on and I'll show you how to do that it's super simple take your pink yarn or whatever color you want to use for your gingerbread make your slip knot chain two and then in the second chain from the hook we're going to stitch five single crochets one two three four and five whoops that string out of the way we'll join to our first single crochet there we go with a slip stitch we'll cut our yarn leaving ourselves quite a bit to sew it in place we'll go to our next stitch pull that loop to the back and tie that off and again sometimes you get that little hole which is fine this end has to be all tidied up and we have to weave it in anyway so we'll go ahead and thread that on we'll stitch around close up that hole 
There we go. Make sure it's nice and tight. Clip that string. So here's our little cheek, and now it's ready to go on our gingerbread girl or boy, whichever kind that you're making. All right, so we're going to take our little cheek, and we're going to put it right on the end where we stitched our little smile. And we're just going to stitch around the edges. We do not want this to be very 3D. Sometimes I like them when they poof up. We want to try to keep it smooshed down. Because remember, this is a coaster as well as decorations. And we don't want our coffee cups and cocoa mugs to get knocked over. And so we do want to try to keep those cheeks as flat as possible. All right, so it's all sewn on. We'll go to the back and we'll just weave that in, being careful to stay behind that cheek so we don't have any extra pink yarn showing through. All right, so there is our little gingerbread. I've drunk most of my coffee but it still fits perfectly. <laughs> so here is our completed <laughs> gingerbread coasters. The darker brown ones and the lighter brown ones and different colors. I do think these would be lots of fun to make one that looks just like your grandkids or your kids and use their favorite colors for the details. And don't forget, if you wanna make it into an ornament, make two of your round beige cookie portions and then add your frosting for a much sturdier Christmas ornament.